Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, we're only a few days short of Halloween, a holiday which apparently started off as some sort of blasphemous pagan ritual where people burn incense and read tarot cards or some shit, but today it is mostly notable as being an overly commercialized and nauseating form of extortion for homeowners where if you don't buy candy to promote tooth decay and diabetes for children, you're considered an asshole by all of your neighbors. It's also a holiday where people dress up and pretend to be something they're not, and also a time where women sexually objectify themselves, but even that's becoming risky since your choice of attire could get you cancelled in today's overly politically correct society. So I don't get that much traffic at my house during Halloween, and that's mostly because I live in a rural part of Colorado where 99% of all homeowners own shotguns, but this is a special time for me nonetheless since it gives me the opportunity to talk about hair loss products with a Halloween theme. Last year I did pumpkin seed oil, and I'll link that below in case you didn't see that, and my choice there is pretty obvious because, you know, pumpkins are what they use to make jack-o'-lanterns. So this year, though, we're going to talk about reishi mushrooms for hair loss because reishi mushrooms grow in the fall, and the fall is when Halloween takes place, so logically speaking, it makes sense to cover reishi mushrooms around Halloween time. So what are reishi mushrooms? Well, they're technically an edible mushroom, although they're quite nasty tasting, so they're not eaten the same way as, say, a portobello mushroom, and thus they are usually consumed more as a supplement, like something you'd add to your smoothie smoothie or take in the form of a capsule supplement. The reishi mushroom is rare in the wild though, and usually grows on dead or dying trees in the forest around autumn, but there are ways to cultivate it at home, and thus it has seen some popularity in the alternative medicine market, and is sometimes promoted for its miraculous healing powers by new age naturopathic big pharma conspiracy theorists who have bone broth running in their veins and grass fed butter in their skulls. What's important though is that like a lot of other useless natural garbage that gets promoted by pretty airheads on social media, reishi mushrooms are promoted to have a lot of medicinal benefits, especially since they have been used since ancient times by the Chinese. Most of these health claims, just like 99% of everything else in the naturopathic field of medicine, are entirely baseless and anecdotal, but one of the more interesting claims made about reishi mushrooms is that they may be useful as a natural 5-AR inhibitor to stop hair loss that works similarly to finasteride, and there is even some scientific evidence to back this claim up. So this isn't just some unsubstantiated paleo vomit from some CrossFit Karen on Facebook who brags about doing kipping pull-ups to cure COVID. This may actually be the real deal. Of course, the presence of a scientific study is in no way confirmation of anything unless it yields quality data. So let's go ahead and go balls deep as we always do and see if the reishi mushroom has some magical hair loss fighting powers behind it. Well, all the brouhaha using reishi mushrooms for hair loss stems from a study out of Japan that was published in 2005, and it's titled, quote, Anti-Androgenic Activities of Ganoderma Lucidum, unquote. Ganoderma lucidum is the scientific name for reishi mushroom, and in this study, the researchers noted that androgenic alopecia diseases like prostate cancer, acne, as well as benign prostatic hypertrophy, as well as androgenic alopecia, are important causes of misery for a lot of people, and that they can be treated with anti-androgens or 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride or dutasteride. But for thousands of years in Asia, like I already mentioned, mushrooms have been used as medicine, and in particular, Ganoderma lucidum, also known as the reishi Reishi mushroom has been used as a remedy for all sorts of androgen-dependent diseases. In fact, the researchers mentioned that there are some studies showing extracts of this mushroom that they inhibit prostate cancer cells in vitro. It's also known that prostate cancer cells usually are sensitive to androgens, so the investigators wanted to look to see if the mushroom had any anti-androgenic activity that can affect some other androgen-dependent disease like androgenic alopecia. So. First, the investigators got hold of some Ganoderma lucidum, as well as a bunch of other different types of fungi for comparison. In fact, they looked at 19 different kinds of mushrooms in total. They then obtained some rat livers, as well as some rat prostates, and in order to study them, the researchers ground them up. This resulted in what are called microsomes, which are basically just fragments of cells containing various enzymes, including the 5-AR enzyme. They were then able to use the microsomes to examine the 5-AR inhibition activity of all the different types of mushrooms they cultivated. They mixed up these ground up organ meats with the various mushroom extracts and measured potency of each mushroom on 5-AR inhibition. 
They also took some very unfortunate castrated rats and injected them with testosterone for a week and then sacrificed them in the name of science in order to get their prostates. Some of the rats also got flutamine, which is a very strong anti-androgen, and other rats also ate reishi mushroom as part of their diet, or they took ethanol extracts of reishi mushrooms orally with doses of 1.5 milligram per kilogram or 15 milligrams per kilogram of the mushroom extract for seven days. After seven days of this horrific animal abuse, the rats were finally put out of their misery and their prostates were removed and weighed. So, let's get to the results and see if these rats died in vain. Here's a graph showing the percentage of 5-AR enzyme inhibition for each form of mushroom, and you can see that the most potent inhibitor was the Ganoderma lucidum, also known as the reishi mushroom, which showed what looked like between 70-80% to 80 inhibition of 5-AR at a concentration of 200 parts per million, which means 200 milligrams of ground up mushroom dissolved in a liter of solution. Looking at this graph, you can first conclude that lots of mushrooms actually have some anti-5-AR activity, which is interesting, but the next question you might have is, how does the effect of reishi mushroom compare to finasteride's 5-AR fighting activity? Well, the authors give you the information needed to answer that question, but they definitely do not make it easy. You have to calculate it out yourself, which we'll go ahead and do. So, to calculate the relative potencies of the mushroom versus finasteride, the researchers say that the IC50, which means the concentration needed to inhibit half of the 5-AR enzyme's effects, is 93 parts per million for the reishi mushroom, but is 0.73 micromoles for finasteride. So how the hell can we compare those two numbers when they are using different units? Well. In order to convert parts per million to micromoles and vice versa, you have to know what's called the molecular weight of a substance. So for the mushroom, it is probably made up of thousands of different proteins and other molecules since it is an organism after all. We have no idea what the molecular weight of the mushroom is though. However, finasteride is just a chemical and not an organism like a mushroom, so we know exactly its molecular weight. It is 372.549 grams per mole, so we can convert the 0.73 micromoles of finasteride to parts per million using a calculator. And using this calculator, we find out that the IC50 of finasteride is 0.27196 parts per million. This compares with 93 parts per million for reishi mushroom, so roughly that means that finasteride is actually 342 times more powerful a 5-AR inhibitor than reishi mushroom extract. So even though this study does show that reishi mushrooms have some 5-AR inhibiting properties, it is far weaker than finasteride at least on a comparable weight basis. And also, it's important to remember that the whole mushroom itself isn't the 5-AR inhibitor. It probably is some trace chemical within the mushroom that hasn't been identified yet, and who knows how many mushrooms we'd actually have to eat to get, to get an effect that's comparable to finasteride. It could be more than we could feasibly consume. So even though mechanistically, it looks like reishi mushrooms may have some very weak 5-AR inhibiting properties, there is really no way to determine how many mushrooms you would have to eat to reach an equivalent amount of 5-AR blocking effects to, say, 1 milligram daily of finasteride. We can say that at least on a milligram per milligram basis, reishi mushrooms are a lot less potent than finasteride, at least in rats. The investigators then showed that the reishi mushroom extract inhibited both the type 1 and type 2 isoenzyme, as you can see here. So these mushrooms actually act more like dutasteride than finasteride because dutasteride also blocks both isoenzymes, but remember that hair follicle DHT production is most dependent on the type 2 enzyme, and it isn't clear if the type 1 enzyme plays any important role in hair loss. But getting back to the study, though, the castrated rats who were on testosterone supplements who were fed the reishi mushrooms ended up having less growth of their prostates compared to the control rats, as you can see here. This graph measures prostate weight, and the bar on the left is the control rats. The bar in the middle shows the rats that received flutamide, which is a very powerful anti-androgen, and the bar on the right shows the rats that ate the mushrooms. Clearly, the mushrooms inhibited prostate growth, though not as much as flutamide, which isn't surprising. Finally, the last graph shows the effect on prostate growth from giving the mushrooms at specific doses orally in an alcohol extract. Both 1.5 milligrams per kilogram and 15 milligrams per kilogram of the mushroom suppressed prostate growth, but weirdly enough, the higher dose had less of an effect, which is difficult to explain. Anyways, 
We can conclude from all this that Ganoderma lucidum, also known as the reishi mushroom, do have some anti-androgenic effects, and that's probably due to the blocking of both the type 1 and type 2 5-AR isoenzymes. However, these mushrooms aren't as potent as 5-AR blockers like finasteride. But the big question is, can they help humans with androgenic alopecia? Well, probably not. There are no human studies, and even if it did work, you'd most likely have to eat an incredibly large quantity of the mushrooms, possibly a quantity too large to even physically consume, and even that may not work, because like in the research, it was shown that larger doses were actually less effective, so it would be very difficult to pinpoint any kind of correct titration for human use to get any therapeutic effect at all. And like I said, they apparently taste awful, which would make it very difficult to adhere to long term. Also, remember, mushrooms contain lots of organic substances, some of which may even be toxic at higher doses. There are examples of mushrooms that are considered safe at low quantities, but are actually toxic when too many are consumed. An example of this would be the morel mushroom, which is actually an extremely delicious mushroom that goes really well with pasta, but it can be poisonous and cause gastrointestinal upset if eaten in quantities that are too large. Additionally, if we are to assume it is possible to consume enough reishi mushroom to get finasteride-like suppression of DHT, there is no guarantee that it wouldn't also produce similar or even worse side effects than finasteride, so it seems pretty pointless to try to use reishi mushrooms as a therapy when we already have finasteride, which has been extremely well studied in humans and proven to be both safe and effective in the overwhelming majority of people who use them. Also, I'd be very skeptical of all traditional Chinese medicine simply due to the fact that traditional Chinese medicine is a pseudoscience and an absolute abomination that is leading to extreme threats to our planet's biodiversity, specifically due to the superstitious belief regarding animal parts from endangered species as having therapeutic benefits like rhino horn, tiger penises, elephant skin, bear bile, pangolin scales, and all the other horrific things that Chinese folklore has brought us. So naturally, you should avoid Chinese medicine since it is a classic example of quack medicine, but it is also downright evil and diabolically cruel to animals. It has no place in a civilized society, and reishi mushrooms are just another example of an alleged medicine that may have some mechanistic similarities to real medicine, but in practice, it is completely useless. So go ahead and eat a few mushrooms for Halloween if you'd like, but if you are doing so thinking it is going to save your hair, then you might as well buy a few of those Halloween wigs while they're still in stock because you're definitely going to need them. And all right, until next time, chooms, have a good Halloween. Take care.